Um, welcome to Movie Send Podcast. I'm Summer. And I'm Lynn. And this podcast is basically going to be about various topics in relation to being biracial or multiracial. And, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So since we're both, well, Summer, you want to go ahead and tell them what your mix is? Yeah. So yeah. I'm. Uh, half Japanese and I'm half Norwegian but my nationality is American and uh, Japanese yeah so mine I'm half Vietnamese my mom's Vietnamese and my father is like generic white bread American (laughs) Um, (laughs) they don't know a lot about you know they say they're Irish but it's probably just like only in the last name if you know what I mean that's how a lot of um, white Americans that say they're Irish end up being unless they're like really sure about their heritage but yeah like Summer said we wanted this to be kind of an open conversation space about being biracial and specifically for us our perspective is going to be you know half East Asian and Southeast Asian and half white American But even then, like, we have pretty similar backgrounds in that sense, where, like, for both of us, both our moms are the minority, and both our dads are the, you know, the white one. (laughs) (laughs) And we had, we both had, like, the privilege of growing up somewhere pretty diverse Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But we also have I would say pretty under the surface level, pretty big differences. Like uh, you lived in Japan for a while, right? Yeah. Yeah. I lived in Japan for like nine years. So like I primarily grew up there Mm -hmm. and you grew up in um, the States, right? Yeah. And so I've never even visited Vietnam and like my actual language skills in Vietnamese are very poor. (laughs) <laughs> like I can't read or write which is pretty normal for like diaspora in general not just you know happies mm-hmm. but I have like what linguists call um I'm a passive bilingual where like I can understand a decent amount but I'm really bad at speaking so a yeah. lot of times I'll respond in English but even then yeah. a lot of my understanding is very poor but yeah, I you're I used fluent. to be like that too. Yeah, you're fluent. Yeah, though, right? yeah, I used to be like that where I could understand pretty much everything, mm-hmm. but I would respond back in English. Mm-hmm. I've become fluent like over the years, and like I took um, I majored in one of my majors. So, yeah, I was Jap as uh, was Japanese in college, mm-hmm. so I was able to. But yeah, learn a lot more about it and speak it better. Mm -hmm. um which I really I'm glad I had that opportunity to do that yeah that's um that's a pretty cool major to have like to be able to like embrace your own culture like in an academic setting too Mm -hmm. yeah but um some of the other really kind of differences that we have is like even though our parental like dynamic of race is the same our like our family dynamics are very different so my parents divorced when I was I want to say six or seven probably seven or eight actually and I have Mm -hmm. a younger brother but your parents are have been together like are still together Mm -hmm. and yeah 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 and I have um it's complicated (laughs) but what family isn't um but uh yeah I have uh two half sisters from my dad's side and then I have they have like a half sister through their mom so it is complicated Mm -hmm. but yeah I'm not I'm not very close with them but yeah Mm -hmm. they're my siblings I guess (laughs) (laughs) yeah so I mean we don't want to get too in depth about ourselves in the first episode because we actually wanted to talk about the vice president elect for our first episode, Kamala Harris. Woo woo. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Thank God, right? 
Yeah, finally. Mm -hmm. It's about time. Yeah, so we thought she would be a really good topic to have since she's the first. Uh, Actually, there's some debate about that. Obviously, she's very, for real, the first woman vice president that will be in office. Yeah, yeah. But Mm -hmm. she and she's going to be the first, you know, woman of color as well. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. the first South Asian and first black vice president. Yeah. I remember reading somewhere that she might not be the first person of color in, as the vice president, though there was some. Oh, really? Yeah. I read somewhere that someone was saying that there was actually one of the, you know, many men that were <laughs> vice president in past <laughs> years that he was, I think, half indigenous, but it wasn't public or something. I don't quote me on that. Oh. I think I saw okay. that somewhere. But No, I think I saw that too. But, you know, more importantly, she's like the first woman of color and like yeah. who is black. Which yes. I guess is kind of the point of why we wanted to talk about this is that me saying she's black obviously is not what everybody thinks. Mhm. Yeah. So Uh, Lynn and I came across this Instagram post and they had a post celebrating um, her being the vice president elect and so the first image said uh, for the first time in American history um, a ticket with a woman on it has won Mm -hmm. Um, and then the second one the second photo after that was and this person said she's not black though about Kamala Mm -hmm. and this is like quote she's not black though and then the person then a person replied to her and they said she is half black and half Indian so yes she is black and yes she is Indian and like there was just like a lot of comments debating about yeah her identity essentially yeah so I read on her Wikipedia page that she's half black by like her dad was from British Jamaica and her mom Mm -hmm. is South Asian from I think Tamil Nadu I'm probably saying that terribly wrong but she's from that area of India Mm -hmm. and yeah so a lot of people and I've actually seen this not just with Vice President-elect Harris I've seen this a lot with other people who are biracial and one of their races is black and obviously, neither of us are half Black or half South Asian, so this is not our area of expertise, but mm-hmm. yeah, I've seen that a lot where they say, oh, they're not Black, they're biracial. Yeah. Or um, I saw some other comments on that same thread when you sent it to me saying, she's the first woman of color, she's not Black. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But another interesting thing I've seen is everyone in the media says this is the first black vice president. And they yeah. don't mention that she's South Asian. Yeah. And on media on um, big media posts. And then because I saw a comment also on that same thread right above saying, Can we also acknowledge that she's half Indian? Yeah. So Mm -hmm. both sides of this she's she's not getting recognized on either side of this on the asian side or the black side yeah and um the reason i wanted to say that is because this is a very common experience for anyone who's biracial yeah either side doesn't recognize the the half that's the same side so to put it like for us people who are white will say you're not white you're asian and then people on the asian side will say you're not asian you're white Mm -hmm. and i've i've seen a lot of rhetoric and like people saying they're half and half but i think there's a lot of language now in the mixed community saying that you shouldn't say you're half and half because you're a whole of both cultures. Yeah. I mean, 
I don't know. It's complicated. It, I think it. Um, I think it depends on how the person identifies, because I know, at least for me, I feel much closer to my Japanese heritage mm-hmm. than I do to like my Norwegian heritage. Although I'm proud of both, I really love being both. Mm-hmm. But I definitely know a lot more, and I, I think when I like introduce myself to people, because usually they're like, "Oh, what are you?" You know, <laughs> <laughs> we know what that's like. What are you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basically, like what, what they mean to say is, "What's your ethnicity?" or "What is your race?" Mm-hmm. Um, I usually just don't even explain that I'm half Norwegian. Mm-hmm. I usually just say I'm half. I don't know, I guess from physical appearances, they can tell I'm, like, half Asian and, like, half white. Yeah, and I I just want to say, like, <laughs> when we first met each other, I definitely looked at you, and I knew immediately you were, like, half. I mean, yeah. I obviously, I yeah, didn't. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I didn't know. I did you, the same thing. I didn't know you were half Japanese, but I knew you were half Asian. Yeah, no, I, I didn't know what your ethnicity was, but I knew you were half. I could just tell. Mm-hmm. That you and I were like the same. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like the same. Yeah, it's like it's kind of like when I saw you, it's weird. I, I was like kind of comforted by the fact that there's somebody else like me mm-hmm. that I'm working with. You know, yeah, it's it's really nice. Yeah, because um, we we met at work. Um, we don't work yeah. together anymore, but we met um over a year ago now, actually. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. um, but. You know, that's funny, but I wanted to just say that because I think neither of us are, because, you know, genetics are crazy, and there's some people who are mixed that don't look, you know, the way people think mixed people should look. There are people who are white passing, there are people who are Asian passing, but neither Mm -hmm. of us look, you know, in my case, I don't look very Vietnamese. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I completely agree. Um, I mean, I think we both, I mean, I can't speak for you, but I, I think we both have, like, had experiences throughout our life so far um, where they just, like, people just didn't know what, what we mm-hmm. were. Like, e- they, like, didn't even get it even close. Mm-hmm. Um, so we definitely fall into the racially um, ambiguous category, I think. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I, yeah. Just to bring that back to uh, Vice President Elect Harris, she, I saw on her Wikipedia page that she mentioned like when she would visit her dad, that people wouldn't let her play with their kids because they're like you know quote unquote I think it said like they're because they knew that their dad was black, mm. and my perception of her is when I first look at her, I would not be able to tell that she was half South Asian. I, yeah. I think she's, and she's obviously not white passing. No. And so I would have seen her, like my first instinct was that she was, you know, a light skinned black woman before I, yeah. before, you know, everyone was getting really hyped that in the mixed community that she was mixed. Yeah. And I think that actually plays a lot into why people say she's not black. And yeah. from what I understand, I don't want to say that they're right in saying that she's not black because in my opinion, she is black. Because that's from our experience, that's how we feel we're not, you know, we're not not Asian, we are Asian. Yeah. Exactly. But I think there's a lot of history especially in the United States where you know, like, the one-drop rule is, like, a really racist institution. And I think that's people fighting back on that and saying, like, that certain people past a certain heritage aren't actually Black and people who aren't fully Black don't have the full Black experience or stuff like that. This is, like, rhetoric I've seen online. This is not what I think. But... Mm-hmm. I can kind of understand why people would say that. What do you What do you think? Uh, why people would say she's not yeah. black? Yeah. So my first reaction to people saying, "Oh, she's not black. She's biracial," I was like, "Oh, I don't know." It's, Those are not two separate it things. Would, 
Yeah, it would, I was thinking, I mean, obviously I'm not black, so I don't know what it's like for somebody to say that to me if I was, but I would be really upset if somebody told me, oh, you're not Asian or you're not white, you're biracial. Because I would, those are not mutually because, exclusive. No, it's, it's just, it's just like what we were talking about earlier. We were saying that we're two holes, mm-hmm. not two halves. Mm-hmm. And we, I don't know. It's just, it was, it was like really irritating to me because it seems like, I mean, she, that's how she identifies. I was rereading the comments though after like I read it for the first time. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking maybe they're like some people are saying she's biracial because not only is she black, but she's also Asian. Mm-hmm. I was thinking maybe that's why they were saying that she's biracial, just not to like, maybe not to forget that her other um, heritage. Yeah. But I don't know. It's really hard to interpret comments because you don't. It's just like when you read a text, you don't know how it's said, mm-hmm. like what they meant to say it, like in what tone and stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, we can only go so far with these comments that we read on this one post. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I'm just like trying to play devil's ad- advocate. Maybe not all of them were like trying to take away from her identity, but just also trying to uh, recognize her other identity as well. Yeah, so I... Honestly, I buy that because she's, you know, not like us. We're both mixed with white, which is a very different experience than uh, Vice President-elect Harris because she's, both of her halves are minorities. And Mm -hmm. she's, neither of us are dark-skinned. Like, let's be real. We're both, like, pretty (laughs) light-skinned. Yeah, like really really like white pink Mm -hmm. hints of yellow (laughs) yeah so we are never gonna have that kind of experience that you know she had Mm -hmm. even um because she's you know she's not extremely dark skinned but she's not we're definitely lighter skinned than her and yeah like we're definitely like like you said she is not white passing Mm -hmm. So I think I would even go as far to say people saying she's biracial or a woman or just saying she's a woman of color is trying to be inclusive of both her halves, which I can, which I would buy because a lot of people are very excited that she's, um, that she's black, right? Mm -hmm. But I haven't, I've only seen other Asians get excited that she's also half Asian a lot yeah but I think that also has to do with like the current political climate where um it is really important that someone who's black is in office now so I can kind of understand why it's not getting as much attention from mainstream media that she's also half Indian Mm -hmm. but I mean there's still that erasure factor that they're yeah. not saying that she's half Indian, so that representation is getting, you know, downplayed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I understand why they're focusing on one of the two of her races, mm-hmm. but um, I, I don't know. I do hope that over the years that they do become better about it and try to I don't know like just bring it to light yeah bring it to light because I even I didn't know until I really looked into it that she was biracial Mm -hmm. I Um, I think another thing is that what's you know what really spoke to me was that you know her parents divorced when she was young and what mm -hmm. she lived from what I understand she lived with her mom and like visited her dad So Mm -hmm. in a way, she was definitely more exposed to her, you know, her South Asian side. Because she lived with her mom, right? And yeah, so 
I have that similar experience where I was like definitely more exposed to my Vietnamese side. I, after my parents, you know, separated, they, I didn't hang out with like the cousins on my dad's side or anything also because they're way older and like none of them are my age. So yeah. If we have that shared, you know, um, experience, she's definitely more influenced culturally by her Asian side. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's that's an interesting thing to have where people aren't exactly recognizing that part of her. Yeah. Because I I have a similar kind of experience where um, out of all my cousins, I'm the only one who's not full Vietnamese on that side. Mm-hmm. So it's very it's very obvious, you know, when we're all uh, together. And I haven't met many other people who are mixed Vietnamese. And yeah. something else, like, I've really only met in our generation. It's much more common now for people our age who are having kids um, to have to be mixed, right? Yeah. And I think that has to do with, like, culture and history, obviously. Because I've heard of more people being... Maybe on the West Coast, not on the East Coast where we are. But there's definitely more people who are mixed with Japanese than there are Vietnamese in our age group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So being, and then her being a public figure, having the side that she grew up with kind of pushed under the rug or even like denied. It's pretty, it's pretty sad. Like, because I have that same experience where you grow up with one side, you don't interact with the other side that much. So like, because earlier when you said you identify as like half Japanese, when people ask me, I actually just say like I'm Vietnamese because Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up with like that much of that influence. Yeah. So, and then of course people like pry further, like you don't look Vietnamese. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm half. Like my mom's Vietnamese. (laughs) But I usually just like, just to also be quick, but also because that's how I feel. I usually just say mm-hmm. that I'm Vietnamese. Yeah. And then people saying like, oh, but you're only half. And like denying yeah. the fact that I grew up with my Vietnamese mom. Yeah. You know, so I I, th- I feel like it's kind of sad that she grew up from there. And then people, she's, people aren't recognizing that you know, she's also half Asian, but then the side that people recognize there are people on her own side also denying that she's Black. <laughs> yeah, I... I feel like I, she can't win. <laughs> no, she can't. And I think you and I know that we can't win. Um, I mean, you and I have experienced that too. We just mm-hmm. can't win with our... Of course, not with everyone. There are a lot of people who are accepting, um, but... Mm-hmm. And like, not even just accepting like they just see us as who we are Mm -hmm. um but I think that's just like a big big problem Mm -hmm. in like the mixed half half (laughs) happy community is Mm -hmm. like people like denying who you are which blows my mind like you I've told you this is who I am I identify this way Mm-hmm. yet you're just gonna like tell me I'm not even though you don't know anything about me exactly. how I grew up mm-hmm. like it's just what are you thinking like I, I don't know it's uh, it's like they want you to it's... prove it like <laughs> yeah it, yeah exactly like what do you want me to do like break out my like birth certificate or like <laughs> my family history that I have like <laughs> the Japanese government like I have that piece of paper but why should I fucking show you like I don't know you (laughs) (laughs) it's like it's such bullshit and it like I remember they were questioning back when Obama was president they were also questioning like if he was oh yeah um like what his like race was and if he was like weren't they questioning if he was like American yeah because Um, I think it had to do with him being born in Hawaii yeah, um, but yeah, that's also an interesting thing you brought up because Obama is also half black. Yeah, but no one refers to him as half black. They just refer to him as black. 
Yeah. Which is like, I don't know. It's like, I guess like it just comes back to like, how does the person themselves identify? Yeah. Maybe he just, I don't know. Obviously I don't know him, Like, <laughs> but <laughs> that'd be cool if I did, but um, maybe like, when he introduces himself like before he became like a public figure you know like a politician and Mm -hmm. stuff um maybe he did just identify that way you know like yeah and since he's not white passing it was like i don't know like it was uh people just accepted it maybe Mm -hmm. i don't know i'm sure there are people who didn't accept it of course there's always going to be people like that Mm -hmm. but it i think it's like how you just say, oh, I'm Vietnamese, you know, Mm -hmm. like, I just think it depends on how the person identifies. Right. Um, Yeah. People should just respect that, I think. Yeah, I think there's just a long history of uh, people who are monoracial denying (laughs) people who are biracial. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Denying the fact Um, that they exist by erasing their identity. Or reducing yeah. their identity to one half when they always when if they're you know like you, where they identify mm-hmm. as with both, mm-hmm. and they reduce you to usually what the side that they are not is. So like some yeah. like if you're you know your white relatives were like oh but you're you're Japanese, um, mm-hmm. even though you identify with both. So yeah. I think that that happens. I don't know how the next generation's going to be, but I know at least for our generation, so like uh, the cusp of millennial and Gen Z, mm-hmm. there's still a lot of that that happens, like, you know, erasing mixed people's identity. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's just... Yeah, I I don't know. It's sad. Um, it's it is sad, and you know, it's it's something that takes a lot of time, and I guess over time, that's gonna get better for like younger people who are uh, multiracial. Yeah, but definitely for people older than us and our age. Yeah, it's still kind of a hard topic for people to wrap their head around (laughs) yeah I mean it's I'm not gonna lie it's it's complicated it's a complicated top being like multiracial biracial it's complicated it's Mm -hmm. not easy Mm -hmm. um and I don't know it's just I I'd like to I'd like to of course once we like get going with this podcast a bit more I'd like to interview and ask um, other biracial people and monoracial people questions about what they think. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, like, for example, this topic, you know, I, I would like to know what people think. Yeah, if anyone um, listening to this who's, you know, Black or also biracial and half Black wants to, like, yeah. <laughs> let us know, like, we'd love to, like, listen to it and talk about it. Because since neither yeah. of us are are half black we don't really know the weight that that carries so that would be yeah. really awesome if anyone comes across this and wants to talk to us about that <laughs> yeah since we can't speak on it it's um we really want to learn about it more because mm-hmm. maybe we're just like completely off the mark <laughs> about this you know I um, hope not I don't know <laughs> I hope not either. I mean, we can only speak from, like, being biracial, mm-hmm. but um, I don't know. It's just interesting to see what um, these different people are saying in the comments. Some are really fucking rude, though. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, some of them were pretty rude. I think... Um, like, just objectively, like, rude. <laughs> if you have the link to that Instagram post we should we'll link it um below with wherever you're listening to this so you can kind of scroll through the comments and see what we mean about people saying that she's you know biracial or not black so yeah 
and if you do want to um, come on to the podcast and you know tell us that about your experience you can email us at nigisonpodcast at gmail.com we have our yeah. own email if you need to contact <laughs> us for anything <laughs> i guess we should also really quickly say like what the name of our podcast means so if you want to oh, tell yeah. about your part <laughs> okay yeah so um Lynn and I both love tea, so <laughs> <laughs> not like gossip tea, although sometimes that's really fun to talk about too, mm-hmm. but no, like the, like tea, like tea leaves, um, <laughs> so, um, my favorite tea, um, is mugicha, and that's barley tea in Japanese, mm-hmm. um, and then Lynn, do you want to say what Yeah, so my is tea is like this pretty specific tea. From Vietnam it's called a uh, jasheng which is like lotus leaf tea and it's very luxurious and very expensive so I don't get to have it often but <laughs> it's very good <laughs> yeah it sounds really good mm-hmm. yeah so we did like the first part of the name as mugi like mm-hmm. mugicha mm-hmm. and then and yeah we did yeah at first it was a way longer name it was like Mugi Chasen, but because the way yeah. that for Japanese the the part that means tea was at the end, and then the part in Vietnamese that means tea was at the beginning, but that was way too long. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we settled on Mugi Sen, which I think is I super think cute. It's so perfect because like so many reasons. Let's list them off. Okay, so we both love tea. Mm-hmm great reason (laughs) it's cute it's like such a cute name Uh and also it's like it shows like it's like half and half just like us we're half you know crazy (laughs) how fitting (laughs) i think it's so cute (laughs) yeah i love it if anyone wants to make us cover art you know we have one but if anyone super artistic wants to you know contribute that would be amazing. Yeah. We'd love to fix, we'd love to feature like a mixed artist. Yes, actually, yeah. We wanna yeah, we wanna feature, we wanna plug all the mixed like people. Mm-hmm. So try to I don't know, send us send us like some cover if interact anybody with wants us to do that. Yes, <laughs> please. So if you guys yeah. have any thoughts on this topic if you want to contribute your thoughts let us know we'll have like a little session in the next podcast to uh talk about you know answer questions or talk about your thoughts if you just send us an email so yeah and we have a lot of topics lined up that we want to talk about already but if you also have suggestions please let us know yeah or if you want us to talk about anything specific but we'll catch you guys next time